the uh, SpaceX which is preparing for a launch on next Friday, exactly a week from now. It'll be uh, delivering some more supplies and equipment to the International Space Station, as well as, as a lot of research and experiment hardware. As part of that, it'll be carrying up a special payload for about 12 different student teams for student experiments that'll be performed on the International Space Station. To talk with us a little bit about this special payload is Dr. Jeff Goldstein from the National Center for Earth and Space Science and Education. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being uh, for having me. So why don't we start with uh, if you could just tell us a little bit about the special payload, the Yankee Clipper payload. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how many students have been involved in these experiments? Yeah, that that's our eighth flight opportunity uh, to low Earth orbit, and the Yankee Clipper payload is part of Mission Six to the International Space Station. There are 18 experiments aboard Yankee Clipper, and each experiment represents the culmination of hundreds of students at the local level in a school district or a community um, designing microgravity experiments and, and writing formal research proposals just like professionals. So uh, across the entire Yankee Clipper payload, those 18 experiments represent the culmination of 6,900 students fully immersed in formal microgravity experiment design and 1,487 proposals submitted by student teams for flight experiments. And then one experiment is selected to fly for each community. So the student flight team truly represent an ambassadorial core for the hundreds of students back home that are absolutely invested in this effort and feel that they are part of America's space program. That's amazing. Um, so some of these experiments are, at least some of them are reconstituted experiments that were lost on the recent um, loss of the orbital Cygnus vehicle. And these teams uh, turned around in less than two months to get their experiments uh, reflown on SpaceX. Can you tell us a little bit about that effort? Yeah, well, the, these teams are designing experiments over a whole range of possible uh, science disciplines. Um, you know, I'm looking down at my spreadsheet here, crystal growth, composting, seed germination, life cycle of microaquatic life, tin whisker growth, food preservation, bacterial studies. I mean, it's a, it's a smattering of what we see from the professional community. And on October 28th, um, we had uh, 130 delegates from the SSEP, the Student Space Flight Experiments Program communities, um, at the launch site. We had 42 student researchers, and we were at a public site, Arbuckle Neck Road, which I think is the closest viewing site that's um, uh, within the safety zone. Um, it's only 1.7 miles away from the launch pad. And the road terminates on the water, Oyster Bay, and looking uh, a lot, uh, uh, past the water, you can see the, the rocket on Pad 0A. And just to give you a sense of what it was like, um, uh, this was a night launch. Um, the sun was setting. The moon hung very low um, in the sky. The rocket was awash in, in spotlights, floodlights. It was a beautiful night. Um, this was the second time we came. We had been there the night before. Uh, but that was scrubbed because, if you remember, there was a boat in the restricted zone. And this time we got past a, a T-minus 12-second hold, and everybody felt that, that it was going to fly this time around. And we had a, a patch to mission control and brought a, 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 a portable PA system with us. So we had mission control filling the air on the shoreline. And uh, we, we all got together and did the 10-second countdown, and you could look at the faces. I remember it, I took time to look at everybody's face, and you could see a euphoria um, in both young and, old, young and old, across generational lines. There was this euphoria and this spirit of exploration in everyone's face. And the rocket ignited, and everybody was cheering, and then it became very clear that something was very wrong. And uh, a few seconds later, there was a massive detonation. Two seconds after that, the blast wave hit us. And it went from euphoria to despair. And security was incredibly effective. They hustled us out of there very quickly. And many of our teams, we didn't have any time to decompress. They, they were, they were uh, scattering. And many drove through the night to get back home uh, in the midst of this depression. And this was a national news story. There were media outlets that were waiting for them in the, in the early morning hours. Um, and what we were trying to do on social media is keep their spirits alive and let them understand that, you know, failure is a part of life. Failure happens. 
and what we do in the face of failure defines who we are. And we didn't know how Mission 6 was going to proceed, but we, we, we sort of got a glimpse of this very quickly. Within, with le within less than an hour of the accident, Jeff Manber, the, uh, the managing director of Nanorax, a launch services provider, called me um, and said, we are uh, working on, uh, on, on how we can re-manifest this. And behind the scenes, he was talking with NASA, the space station, uh, the space station office, he was talking to folks at the White House, and we were just telling the students, we're trying to figure out how we can make this work, whether it's going to be six months, a year. We, we didn't know what the turnaround time would be. Our hearts went out to NASA and orbital sciences. Um, and then within a week, we were notified, we were given marching orders by Nanoracks that we need to move forward and process a new uh, Yankee Clipper II payload by November 21st. It had to be in Houston by, by November 21st, just three weeks after the accident, because NASA had pulled non-essential payload off of SpaceX-5 and was making room for this, um, for this new uh, reconstituted payload. And um, all of the teams um, really stepped to the plate on this. Um, they, they felt that you know, this was a life-changing experience, that they were really part of um, the space program. And they all, uh, 17 of the 18 experiments um, were reconstituted and got to Houston for payload integration on time. They stepped to the plate and did everything expected of a profession, professional microgravity researchers. And the 18th experiment didn't make it on only because there was a swap out of one uh, uh, critical component so they needed to go through flight safety review, review again, and they're going to be flying with Mission 7. So we are go for launch. We are incredibly excited, and we are very um, proud to be part of the space community. Dr. Goldstein, we're so excited that, that the teams were able to jump into action and, and get these experiments put back together to be reflown. Um, I know we, we just have one minute left. You, you kind of spoke to it, but I guess I'm just kind of curious. What is the sentiments of the students now? Um, I think... Um, there's a higher level of euphoria now than there was before because we, you know, we met the challenge and came through. And I think um, this is really an incredibly powerful lesson that, um, you know, research is not supposed to be easy. Human exploration is not supposed to be easy. It's hard. So what? Failure happens and, and we just got to punch through it. And that's what we all did. Wow. So we, we are very proud of these um, student, student researchers.